I have completed my SE exams and I'm moving on with the next phase of my engineering career. Well, in today's video, we're gonna talk about my SE journey, all two years of it, uh, as well as my experiences with both the paper-based format of the exam, as well as the new computer-based format of the SE exam. I'm that hybrid kind of weirdo guinea pig where I've experienced both the old school format and the new computer format. So stick around because I think it'll be beneficial that you hear both sides of my observations. And then we're going to get into my thoughts, feelings, and everything in between about the computer-based format itself and my test day experiences. So stick around, let's get into it. To be honest, I didn't think I was at a point in my career where I was ready to jump in and start taking the SE exams. Uh, I thought I had uh, a couple more years to get under my belt, different projects to you know uh, be involved in before I was ready to take that next step. But the main reason that I ended up taking it was specifically because I heard that the exam was changing from paper-based to computer-based a couple years down the road. I am one who learns by example problems. That's a big reason uh, behind my YouTube channel here where I do example problems that mimic real-world calculations. That's just how I learn best. Helps connect my brain a lot better. Um, and because of that, I know that on the paper-based, and similarly the paper-based for any of you who took the PE exam before it converted to computer-based, you get to take whatever you want into the exam, cheat sheets or quick references to help speed things along because the exam, while it's about your knowledge, uh, definitely about your knowledge, it also has that factor of speed, just like the PE exam. Only the SE I think is, is boosted up on steroids even more. So I didn't want to figure out what was gonna happen when they converted to the computer-based format, what the new rules were gonna be or the formatting or any of that kind of stuff. I just kind of stuck my head in the sand and felt like kind of a old school <laughs> individual and said, I don't wanna learn how to do computers. I like pen and paper and my, my little calculator, so that's, that's the exam I wanna take, so I might as well shoot my shot now before it disappears. And that's that was ultimately the reason why I, I got going. There was that little bit in the back of my head where I was like, man, I have so much to learn still. Uh, maybe I'm kind of jumping into the deep end here. Uh, I'm not quite sure if this is going to be worthwhile. I had all of those thoughts, but I did it anyway. Uh, so let me be an example for you, if you are feeling that way, to just do it. Go for it. It's never going to be the right time to sign up for it and start studying for it and, you know, giving it a valiant effort. Uh, but tr truthfully, if I can do it, I know you can do it. I really do mean that. Um, especially if you give yourself the due diligence to, to study along the way. And if that's not a six month window that you can afford, make it a longer window with with smaller study intervals, but let's stay on topic here. So my first exam was October of 2022. Uh, I think I started studying or at least started accumulating materials about six months prior to that. So call it like April of 2022. I only signed up for one exam. This is a big decision and I have a hindsight looking back, but let me give you the, the first bit of it because I already felt like I was jumping into the deep end and I just wanted to give it a shot. I have a lot of colleagues that suggested to sign up for both um, and just kind of rip that Band-Aid off and, and get into it. Uh, the, the reasoning behind it is that while it is a, a huge amount of material to cover, the, it's, the difference between vertical gravity design and lateral design, they, they blend with one another. You're still working with you know, forces and stresses and, and capacities and demands and, and deriving demands and deriving capacities. Uh, using the same types of materials. There are outliers in both that that you know you need to that are separate from one another. But ultimately, if you're studying a ton for one, it will bleed into the things that you need to study for the other one. But for me, I I just felt like I was gonna overwhelm myself. So I, I was realistic and said, let me just start with one and see how it goes. I did my studying, but ultimately I ended up not passing the gravity exam. I learned a lot. I felt good on the exam, especially in the morning. I felt great on. Uh, in the afternoon, there just happened to be one question in particular that I froze up on and wasn't able to answer. So I ended up failing my gravity paper-based exam. I signed up instantly for the same exam. Uh, it was now April, 2023 that I would be sitting for that exam. It was still paper-based, so okay. 
but I was shell shocked in the sense that I didn't, I just wanted to get gravity out of the way. I didn't want to add more to my workload and sign up, uh, you know, for the lateral exam as well. I just want, wanted to say, okay, I was so close last time. Let me get that out of the way. And then we can fully focus head down on lateral. Uh, six months goes by, I study more, I learn a heck of a lot more, uh, and I go into April of 2023 uh, for my gravity exam, and I end up uh, passing that one. That exam, I felt even more confident on, and in the afternoon, I had no worries about any of the questions. Uh, I felt really confident. When I saw that green acceptable result, I, I literally, like, jumped out of my chair. Um, I know I, I posted a quick short when when I had received it, but I had opened it prior to making that short. Uh, I was so nervous, uh, to, especially with coming from a, a failed exam prior to that and now coming up to a year's worth of time that I spent in this study process. It was a great feeling. It was. It just, it allowed, your shoulders are like up here to everything just to drop. Um, and it gives you at least me, the boost of confidence to say, I do fucking know some of this stuff. I don't know all this stuff. We Nobody knows all this stuff, but I do know some of this stuff and they say I know enough of it. And now let's, let's get, you know, grab some of this energy to move on to the next step. Now let's pass lateral. Don't play down your victories. Uh, I feel like myself included, we can dwell a lot on our failures and there's a lot you gotta go through in structural engineering uh, as a career, for sure. You're constantly learning stuff, but play up your victories. There's, I feel like us as engineers, we just, we don't do that all that often as, as, a, as a people, as a culture, uh, but do it more, do it more. I'm gonna advocate for that as much as possible. Congratulate yourself more and more about, you know, passing on things and learning new things and, and growing and hitting milestones. Uh, proud of you. Okay. All right. And now it's time to pass lateral. Uh, I've signed up for the October 2023 lateral exam. This is still paper based. And I learned that this is the last paper based format exam for the SE that will be distributed. So throw on a little bit of extra pressure to be like, all right, if you really don't want to, you know, figure out this computer based stuff, you better pass this one. And I was determined to pass this one. Uh, I really put in a lot of additional study hours. Um, there were, I know, a lot of systems that I have never even touched before. Uh, a lot of steel vertical lateral elements, a lot of concrete vertical lateral elements, things that I just, I haven't even experienced or run numbers on in projects before. Uh, so I knew that I needed to push a little bit harder on this. I felt really confident. I thought I knew my stuff. Uh, I thought I had, you know, great uh, guides and cheat sheets and example problems to cover an array of different problems that could be asked. And when I went in, uh, I, I felt great on the exam as well. I didn't feel as good as the, the previous uh, gravity exam, but I felt really good. I felt like it was a passing score. Uh, in the afternoon, I felt like I answered every question and didn't get too tripped up. I thought there's a couple areas where, uh, you know, was going to be a, hmm, not sure about that. But overall, I felt like I did enough, but something kind of like lingered in my gut. I'm like, man, I don't know. What's, what's this weird feeling? Um, you know, intuition or whatever you want to call it. But unfortunately I opened up the, uh, the results thinking I was going to see the green and there was a red unacceptable, which killed me. Uh, you've, if you've seen one of my previous videos kind of talking about my feelings in the moment, I do go through that. Uh, but I was pretty devastated. Now let's talk about my CBT exam experience. I would say the computer-based SE exam is like a car race uh, and you're a race car driver. And you know, the fastest race car is the one that's going to win. You know, it's all about speed. It's all about getting across the finish line uh, as fast as possible. However, due to the formatting and the, the systems that they give you, you're given, instead of a race car, uh, your mom's Honda Civic uh, but even more so than that, instead of being able to use at least the Honda to its full potential, it's, it's full 100 mile per hour uh, potential, uh, you're only allowed to go to second gear. 
And for any of you who drive a Civic, I drove a Civic for a long time, it ain't no Porsche 911 where second gear gets you up to 70 miles an hour. Uh, you're barely getting out of the parking lot in second gear in a Honda Civic. That is how I kind of will describe the experience of the computer-based format. You need to go so fast and know so much in the SE exam to prove yourself. And yet the tools that they gave you were just so clunky and glitchy uh, and just bad in general that it limited your ability to do engineering when you needed to do engineering as fast as possible. Things like only getting one monitor to do work. Not a very big monitor. In modern age now, I feel like everyone's screens are massive. You have at a bare minimum in an engineering firm two monitors that you use simultaneously to run calculations and look at codes if you are using a digital code. You're forced to condense all of that onto a single screen. And I think the screen was like a 24 inch size screen. It's like the smallest screen you can get. Like I said, it's like a Windows 99 operating system. Half of that screen, you have your question. And that question a lot of the times had figures. And those figures usually were bigger than the, the portion of screen that re you were using to you know, have the problem and then have a code open. So you had to kind of scroll through or double click or wherever it was to, to blow up the image. But then when that happened, it covered up your screen. And, you know, so you, you lost information there. Your codes, as you scrolled through them, were loading one sheet at a time. There was like a one second delay between each page that you were trying to load on a code, like, you know, the ACI or the NDS or whatever it was that you were using as you were scrolling, imagine having to wait, like, even if it wasn't a second, maybe I'm dramatizing it, but it was a fraction of a second that you had to pause and wait because the page disappeared and then showed back up again. If you're like me, that drove me bananas, especially when you are pressed trying to do the most important exam of your life to, to date. I believe one of the codes was missing its page numbers up on the top corner, which uh, drove me nuts a bit because when I was using like the, the table of contents to find something and then using a page number to then reference that, and then to get to the general area and then like kind of scroll to get to the exact page, well, that became really difficult if there was no page numbers. Maybe that was just a trick of the eye, of my eye or something, and it was there the whole time. You can, you know, bash me in the comments below, but I swear, both exams that I took, morning and afternoon, that same problem happened to me with one of the codes. So uh, if you're out there NCES, check into that quick and make sure that that's all there, but uh, that, was, that was a huge problem as well. Codes seem to, if I'm remembering correctly, it's been a little bit for me, uh, open from the beginning after you close them. So you can move through a code and then get to the section that you're looking for and use it and then close it because you needed that screen real estate to then run numbers. But then if you reopen that same code, it didn't stay in the place that you had previously had it. It like started at the beginning again, which was a massive problem as well because you're used to opening and closing or having your fingers in the, uh, you know, the, the steel manual and you're like, oh, checking this, writing this number, checking that, writing this number, getting material you know, properties or geometric properties. And you're, you're flying and what's that equation? Oh yeah. Okay. Got to go to section J. Okay. And you're, 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 that's just how your workflow is typically as a structural engineer. But in this format, you're, you click out of the code and you reopen it and you start from the first page again, and then you got to move through again. And it, it was clumsy and slow. It just was so slow. Everything that you had to do, you had to take a breath and just say, I'm going to work at 15% speed and hopefully still be able to, to get through it. All of you savvy people out there might be saying, but what about the control F function? Why do you even need to move through a book like a, like an old book type of thing? We have technology. Well, control F, at least for me, didn't help all that much because boy, if you're going to look up a keyword like sheer or moment, or I don't know, something slightly more generic, boy, that control F finds all 52,000 references within the ASC steel manual when sheer comes into play, uh, or sheer friction. And one of the, the always the, the first thing that pops up is when it's mentioned in the table of contents, which I guess you could then say, well, then use the page number and go to the page number. But it just overloaded you with too many references or too much information that then made it irrelevant and exponents you can't even look up. So that's a bummer as well. And the last thing I'm going to say is the figures themselves in, in the exam were 
were difficult. Uh, they seemed extra crude uh, than in, in previous exams. Uh, crude just in the sense of like the actual graphic itself. It was difficult to interpret what it seemed like you were actually looking at for a building or a bridge or, or whatever you happen to be looking at. I feel like those could could be freshened up, especially if you if you have this digital ability to, you know, now in front of you at your disposal. Why, why make these figures so, so so poorly done or so limited? Um, just just my opinion there, but yeah, it was that was a struggle. I just felt disappointed because I felt so removed from what it means to feel like a structural engineer. I didn't function like I do. Uh, in the workplace. And I think that's a problem uh, because ultimately how you gr are growing as an engineer happens in the workplace. And so once you build up that experience and then you study on top of that to really refine those skills, you should be able to then use that collective knowledge in an exam that is uh, in a format that mimics your, your work environment. Otherwise, now people are just going to be studying for a style of exam that that is completely disassociated with what it means to actually be the thing that you're trying to become. Does that make sense? And I know this is the first one. I know that I was the guinea pig. I know that was, uh, you know, I was looking through Reddit. I was looking through online as I was studying. Everyone said the same thing. Oh, it's, I'm not, you know, this is going to be the gu guinea pigs. There's going to be plenty of problems. This is, this is the big switch and it's not going to all be figured out. So I expected that it just felt like in the digital age that we're at, that it would have been set up a little bit better. Overall, the test itself stunk, but it wasn't as bad as the reference materials that were given to you. Those need to be rethought or or improved upon in these upcoming exams for the engineers that are taking them. I think this is the the lowest uh, pass rate that's that's ever been uh, in recent history, at least, uh, especially for <laughs> for the exam that I took the the lateral AM and PM, specifically the PM. Uh, I am blown away that I passed both of them. Uh, when I walked out of the exam for both the morning and afternoon, uh, I gave myself a big thumbs down. I thought I, I failed both of them. Uh, it just, it felt bad the whole way. It felt clunky the whole way, but I guess somewhere in my scribblings with the non-erasable Sharpie on the, the plastic paper that I did. Uh, so I'm thankful that I held it together and got through it. But uh, the Yelp review is uh, one out of 10. Everything was horrible, except the people were very nice that were there and I ended up passing. So that's why it's a one. Otherwise it would have been a zero out of 10. And in conclusion, I think it's a, like, a PSA to the test providers that this needs to be ironed out as quickly as possible. This can't linger. Uh, I think we've already seen a decline in test taking for the SE exam over the years. And by making it more difficult, by making it more expensive, it's 350 per test now with four tests instead of two tests at 500. Don't think nobody didn't see that. Uh, and you got rid of all the human element. I thought that makes it less expensive, but I don't know. I, I don't know the economics behind it. So uh, it, it's only going to drive away more potential SEs. And that's only going to be a bad thing for our industry. Our industry is already hurting. People are going, not just people, engineering minds are going to other fields of engineering because of things like this. It's it's a slow buildup of things over time. Low pay, you know, stressful hours, high stress, um, amount of, you know, risk and liability involved with this, uh, the, the testing involved, the certification involved, uh, all of that kind of stuff just keeps on building up reasons why not to be a structural engineer. So in this area, please do everything in your power to mimic the exam to what it's like to be a high functioning structural engineer. Um, it, the experience shouldn't feel bad to the core and make you question why you're doing this. Uh, engineers want to push themselves and they, they get satisfaction from solving problems and learning new things. So make that more of an inviting, doable process. I'm not saying make it easier. Do not make it easier, but I'm saying make it more accessible and more streamlined.